Hey everyone, Barron's just published this article titled Buy Nikola Stock Because It's When, Not If, Hydrogen Tech is Adopted. And oh boy do I have a lot of thoughts about this one, especially with it coming out so close to the unlock date for so many Nikola shares. I can't see why there'd be any motivation to artificially raise the stock price by putting out incredibly positive news about Nikola because some very powerful people and companies want to dump their Nikola stock soon, but we'll get to that at the end. But that headline has a straight up lie, and if you read the rest of the article you'll find out what it is, but we'll talk about that in a bit later. This one is actually difficult for me because I legitimately have so many core issues with the article I don't even know where to start but all right let's start with the core assumption that is buy Nikola stock because hydrogen will be successful now I have a fundamental disagreement with the author because I don't think hydrogen as a fuel source for trucking will necessarily be adopted I think it might be but I also think it might not but for the sake of argument let's just say that hydrogen becomes the next industry standard fuel for long-haul trucking that still doesn't mean that Nikola will be successful the idea the author is posing is that if hydrogen becomes widespread then Nikola must be successful because they're using hydrogen but that's simply isn't the case. Just because they're using the right fuel source doesn't mean they'll win in the hydrogen powered trucking market. There are a bunch of other companies trying to come to market with the hydrogen powered semi just like Nikola. And there are established companies too like Toyota and Hyundai and Daimler. Just because you're making a product in the market doesn't mean you'll be successful. I mean, look back at the smartphone market. Incredibly large and successful, but that doesn't mean all smartphone makers like Blackberry or Motorola or Nokia were necessarily successful. It takes more than just being in the right market to achieve success in that market. And competing against tried and true companies like Toyota could make things difficult. Toyota's been working on fuel cell vehicles since 1992, and they've had hydrogen powered vehicles on the roads since 2000. And that actually segues perfectly into another problem I have with this whole article, the idea that hydrogen has to be successful. The whole article is based off this loop capital analyst, Jeff Kaufman, giving Nikola a buy, which gives them a total of three buys, two neutrals, and one sell. Now let's get into the lie. The headline is that buy Nikola stock because it's when, not if, hydrogen tech is adopted. And that headline is based off this information given by Jeff Kaufman. That despite allegations that Nikola may have overhyped its technological prowess, it is a question of when and not if new zero emission technologies are adopted in the coming decade. Nikola, of course, plans to launch zero emission heavy duty trucks powered by batteries and hydrogen fuel cells in the coming years. Did you catch that? Kaufman says it's a question of when, not if, new zero emission technologies are adopted. But he doesn't say those technologies would be hydrogen. Batteries are zero emission and they've proven themselves to be incredibly effective. So the headline about hydrogen tech being adopted is totally off base. It could be just batteries that revolutionize the trucking industry. Nikola itself admits that batteries are going to play an important role in the revolution of the trucking industry. In fact, their first truck to be produced is supposed to be the Nikola Trey battery only version which is going to be built in Germany in 2021 and they're claiming a 250 to 300 mile range on that model, which while not an astounding range, is enough to meet the needs of many truckers. Tesla has also announced their battery only version of a semi, the Tesla semi, with a range of 300 or 500 miles. You might not think that's enough range, but look at it this way. Legally in the US, truckers are only allowed to drive 11 hours within a 24 hour time frame. So if they can only go 11 hours max in one day and they're going an average of 55 to 60 miles per hour during those hours, then the max distance they can go is around 605 to 650 miles. And that's the max allowed under the law. Having a 500 mile range means that the trucker can stop for a few breaks and charge while stopped. And getting that to 650 miles is very realistic. What I'm trying to say here is that battery only is actually already looking like it's going to fit the needs of the majority of truckers. And this is only a first generation product. It's only going to get better from here. Anyways, the point is building out a hydrogen refueling network is incredibly expensive. Expensive. And producing that fuel and then getting it to the stations is also really expensive. So if batteries can be good enough, then hydrogen in the trucking industry will be dead before it even gets started. And this is why hydrogen has been around in the mainstream for the last 70 years and it's never achieved any popularity. It simply doesn't have a compelling action statement. Right now, the main reason to get hydrogen powered vehicles over battery electric vehicles would be for the fast refueling times, which currently Nikola itself has stated it takes around 45 minutes to fill up one of their semis. One thing it's critical to know uh, the, the, the 
the current status of fueling is about 45 minutes, which is too long. They're trying to get it down below 15 minutes, but they haven't done it yet. And this isn't even to mention right now that the cost of hydrogen is way more expensive than diesel. It currently costs around double the price of gasoline to fill up a hydrogen tank versus a regular gas tank. And I don't want the whole video to be on why hydrogen hasn't been adopted. I've already done one on that. But to sum it up, for hydrogen to become popular, they need to create a vast refueling network, reduce the cost of hydrogen by over half, and get the refueling times down. Well, actually, there's a whole bunch more than that, but those are just some of the things. And if we look at what needs to happen for electric semis to be adopted, none of those hurdles apply. There already is a massive recharging network built out and it's growing daily. And the cost of electricity is already cheaper than diesel. So battery powered semis already have everything they need in order to be successful. So if the argument is just that hydrogen will give semis faster refueling time, that might be true. But if there isn't a robust refueling network and the fuel costs significantly more, well, all of a sudden hydrogen doesn't sound nearly as good as it did. Later on in the article, Kaufman says, it's also not a question whether or not Nikola participates in that revolution, it's a question of to what degree. And to some extent, I actually agree with him. Nikola Motors has already partnered with a well-known industrial vehicle manufacturer, Aveco, to make the Nikola tray. The first version is going to be that battery electric version we talked about earlier, and then they're supposed to manufacture a fuel cell version a few years after that. We've seen some of the prototypes of the tray, so even if Nikola closes up shop right now, they did at least help motivate Iveco along the zero emission pathway, so yes, they have participated in that revolution. The next issue I have with the article is when it says this. Nikola has intellectual property attractive to other industry players and possesses a first mover advantage in fuel cells for heavy duty applications. And to that I say, what intellectual property? You hear this time and time again about this intellectual property, but I haven't seen patents or really anything proving that to be true. When I looked up all the patents for Nikola Motors, I found seven. Well, actually six, one of them they're still applying for it, but we'll say seven. There were for a motor gearbox assembly, vehicle frame arrangement, and vehicle front and rear suspension systems. That's it. Nothing regarding fuel cells or the famed inverters or the next level battery technology that was supposed to be shown to the world in about a week at Nikola World. In fact, when Nikola set the record straight from the Hindenburg report, they said that at no time did Nikola state that the inverter on the prototype truck shown in the video was the company's or would be used in production. Nikola has been designing, engineering, and working on its own inverter for quite some time. The company does use third-party parts in prototype vehicles, some of which may be subsequently swapped out for its own parts in production. So right there, they don't even say that they will for sure use their own inverters. They might if they want to, but they also might just use a third-party inverter. Who knows? Anyways, all this to say, I really don't know what intellectual property is so attractive to industry players. From the patent filings, I sure couldn't find any. And yes, of course, they may have other things that they don't have patents for yet, but from what we can definitely see, it doesn't look like much. Then the author spends the rest of the time saying that zero emission vehicle sales are set to grow partially because of consumer demand and partially because of global governmental entities are trying to speed up that adoption rate, stating, there is an accelerated political push by countries around the world to reduce carbon footprints and transition. And that's totally correct. But it still doesn't prove the point that you should buy Nikola stock for the reasons I just said a bit ago. Just because zero emission companies are successful doesn't mean Nikola is guaranteed to be successful. And then he says this, the global passenger car market is worth trillions each year. Cars and trucks are big business. Again, that doesn't make the case for Nikola. Nikola has stated time and time again that their core business is semi-trucks and hydrogen. They have said they won't, as in will not, build a Badger if they don't get a partner to build it for them. The Badger was something we were doing because a lot of people were interested in it. And we said from the beginning that if we build the Badger, it will be with a partner. If we don't have a partner, we probably won't build the Badger. So that means if the GM deal falls through, then they won't even be entering the global passenger market at all. And even if the deal with GM goes through, the focus of Nikola still will only be on the semi trucks, not the pickup trucks. All right, and now I wanna talk about the timing of the article. As we all know, there are millions of dollars worth of Nikola stock that's locked up until early December, which is just over a week away. So it doesn't exactly take a Sherlock Holmes level of investigation to look at this and say, huh, there's an article saying to buy Nikola stock right now, about as blatantly as you could say it. 
what would motivate them to publish this article right now? Now, I'm not saying this is what they're doing. I don't know what their motivation is. But what I am saying is that with this much money on the line, we know companies and media outlets have in the past intentionally manipulated stock prices to their advantage. Happens all the time. So considering there are so many shares of Nikola that are about to be unlocked, we need to be especially cautious and skeptical of the information that's being spread about Nikola, especially when it's this blatant. I mean, in the title, it literally says, buy Nikola stock. You can't get much more obvious than that. I'm saying don't think just because Nikola is getting a buy rating recently that that means everything is on the up and up. We don't know the motivation of the analysts or the companies involved. I'm not saying they're intentionally manipulating the stock price to artificially raise it before the unlock date, but you never know. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. What do you guys think? What do you think is the motivation for Barron's to publish a bullish article on Nikola this close to the unlock date? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.